Hello everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews, or in this case a special NBA Show Discuss. This is the artist guy that tries to draw James Cork, and with me I have podcasting machine and planes walker extraordinaire Norman Sanso. Hello, no special intro for today. <laughs> what, are you unplugged or something? No oh, man, it's the holiday. It's the holidays. <laughs> we're recording this on December, in case you guys... I'm breaking the illusion and all that. But you're not alone. We also have the beard, the bro, the guy who plays Dark Souls, awesome artist, Rollicious. And waifu claimer, don't forget that. And uh, waifu people. claimer, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this PG, you know? It's like, don't talk about waifus here, come on. It's like... <laughs> I don't understand how that's not peachy, but okay, whatever. Nobody let, wants to let you close to their female characters, or else you're going to claim all of them. Totally and wrong. finally, la last but not least, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, awesome brony reviewer, Silverquill. One night in a thunderstorm, I was bitten by a horse and a bird and a turducken. That last part was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot you were also bitten by a tiny jacket chicken. <laughs> Well, that just goes without saying. <laughs> Got hit by a radioactive pigeon. <laughs> no, wait, that's how many zoo came to be. Sorry. Oh, Wrong audio story. <laughs> and, yeah, in case you guys didn't know, or by the title by itself, we're going to be talking about Con Fury, which is, uh, it's been a long time coming since people requested us to talk about this one. I think people were claim were wanting us to talk about this since the movie first came out, right? I think so, or it could be us wanting to talk about it. It's been a while. My gosh, I really don't know what to, what to say about this one. So, you know, I'm going to hand it to you directly. Because, I, I mean, I watched this movie twice, but I still don't know what to make of it. Um, So, I'm going to give it away to, to you guys. Like, we're going to try to follow what we always do. First impressions, what did you think of the movie and all that. And then, talk about what it represents. Because this movie is kind of unique. Because it's not really a movie. It's like 30 minutes long. Uh, some people called it a proof of concept, and we we are going to talk about what that means exactly later on as we as we continue. But mm. and <coughs> despite having real issues here, we're going to continue with the inverted alphabetical order. So as per usual, Silver, you go first. What, what do you make of this movie? It falls into the category of so silly it's fun, uh, and more impressively, that's by intent. We all have movies like The Room. Or, or, uh, oh, what's what? There's a Halloween movie, Zombie Strippers. Oh, God. Oh, that one. Samurai Zombie Strippers. Yeah, there you go. Uh, they're, they're movies that are tr just so awful and yet so fun. You can sort of laugh. Sometimes, like the room, they're, they're trying to be serious, but they're failing. And it's almost an experience in and of itself to see how they fail. Kung Fury says, I want to be awful. I want to be a send-up of all the 80s cliches and tropes, and I'm going to dial them up to 11 and just watch the results. So <laughs> it, it is perfect at half an hour long. Just uh, a, a wonderful, absurd display that has just great ideas that are so metal. But it's the 80s, so I don't know how metal that really was. I thought the 80s was all about the neon lights and disco. That's so pear. <laughs> as metal as a Barry Manilow cover. Mm -hmm. So I I loved it. I just had so much fun watching it and having a laugh at all the bizarrity. Now I showed it to my friends, and of course, it's less fun when I suggested to them apparently because they were all complaining about losing brain cells. <laughs> uh, it's never fun when you get those kind of response. Well, they're taking it way too seriously. Mm -hmm. You always get that one guy in the audience. Oh yeah. Is that, did they did they even read the plot of the movie before they started watching it? It's uh, about a cop that travels back in time to fight the master kung fu himself, Hitler, who's the confuser. Really? Uh, <laughs> How can they take it seriously? Uh, well, uh, people people have strange tastes, and yet yeah. they are my friends. <laughs> what about you, Ro? What what did you make of it? Well, first of all, I discovered this movie through a friend when he's like said, there's a cool movie on Steam, like, wait a second, Steam now has movies? <laughs> so I went there, and when I watched the whole 30 minutes of Kung Fury, and the first of all, the first thing that came to my mind was like, this is a parody of all 80s tropes and movies and everything that could be possibly came from the 80s, with lasers and the music and editing, and even the VHS tape effects. But then after I see, like, the Comic-Con interview they have, like, 
okay, this is not exactly intended to be a parody. It was just more of a guy who just wanted to, like, do something from inspiration from all the 80s music he once listened to, from all the images in his head. He just wrote this script, and he went on to want to show the people this idea that he had. And I kind of relate to Mr. Sandberg's on this one, because that's what basically I do. I listen to something, I see something, I get these crazy images like, I want to draw that. And that's what he did. He made Con Fury. And personally, <laughs> I give it a solid 100 out of 10. I love what I saw. Wow. Nice. It had everything. Explosions, lasers, awesome soundtrack, David Hasselhoff. Uh, David Hasselhoff was like terrible with names. Yes. Yeah, no, no, you say it right. It's David Hasselhoff. Yeah, David. Okay, just want to make oh. Anyway, hot chicks, dinosaurs, <laughs> Kung Fu, splits. <laughs> did I mention explosions? Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah. Everything on the list of what makes them we is checked. By the description you're telling us, Ro, it's nuts. Like, this movie can be real. It is! I ain't saying it's not real, but it's... Wow, it just sounds so far-fetched. Well, well, personally, I'm easily entertained and easily amused. This movie met all my standards. (laughs) I I didn't hear you say that. I heard Papyrus say that. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, realized, all my standards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just realized what I said. I did not intend that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> what about you, Norman? What do you think of this movie? <sighs> if, if there is anything left to say, because Rock kind of covered all the bases. Yeah, true that. The first time I heard this movie was from... Uh, uh, well, funny enough, it was in your chat james like when you were live streaming uh I think oh my god that was were, ages ago yeah uh, there were uh, sketchy sounds and i think sketchy sounds linked me to the pilot video for kung fury and the funny thing was uh the person who linked that to him was final draft former head of efn Ooh, yes 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 the guy who did uh who Everfree on the Radio, Free network. network yeah so yeah okay uh, he shared it with me, and I saw the trailer, and I was like, "This can't be real, right? Like this, this has to be a joke." <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, it's real. It's uh, funded. It's funding, and I think it's fully funded. Like I, I think something like that." And beyond that point, I didn't hear anything. So as time goes on, suddenly I saw a music video starring David Hasselhoff for Kung Fury, and what? <laughs> so uh, apparently, the movie came out. I saw it. And I kind of knew what to expect, but I wasn't ready for it. This movie is full of... How do I put this? If you're the person who likes logical thinking and cannot open your mind to suggestions, <laughs> this movie's not for you. Like, here's no, a good example. Not. Yeah, here's a good example. Do you like to watch Cartoon Network's Sonic Boom? If your answer is no, you won't enjoy this movie. If your answer is yes, please go on, continue. You'll enjoy this movie. Does that Does it work the other way around as well? If yeah. I like Kung Fury, do I ha- do I, will I actually like Sonic Boom? Yes, it works both ways. I'm so worried now. <laughs> Maybe I should check Sonic Boom. Uh, I, I you should, bro. I saw the I saw the cutscenes for the Sonic, uh, the newest Sonic game, and said, yeah, it's probably not for me. Sonic game is not the thing. Like the Sonic games for Sonic Boom are mediocre. The cartoon, they're good. They're really funny. Okay, we're, we're talking about Kung Fury here. We're yeah, not true, talking about true, Sonic true, Boom. True, true, true. We, we, can, we can talk about that another day. That yeah, could be true. a good discussion. Yeah, uh, uh, well, I should. I, I think I should give my, my first impression of, of the movie, at least what I took of, from it when I, when I first watched it. Um, I, when I first watched it, I was very happy to claim it the best movie I have seen all year. Mm-hmm. When, when I first watched it. But then I watched it another time, and the, it's, I realized that Kung Fury is one of those movies that relies heavily on the first impression. Is that if you will watch it the first time, it's very surprising, it's very weird on the way that it's structured and the way that it's made. And considering the, the history that it had, that it got funded through, I think it was Indiegogo or Kickstarter, that they, they put together this whole campaign and they made it happen. And then they come up and said, Oh, this is a proof of concept. We are actually aiming to make a better, a bigger movie out of this. That got me thinking. So I watched the movie again. 
and the jokes that I laughed uh, that I laughed at were not as funny as when I first saw them. And that's because I knew what was coming. I knew that they were going to happen. So uh, the, the 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 surprise, the freshness of it all was um, gone. And then I started thinking, huh? Perhaps in thirty minutes, this this concept sits very nicely, very well. But I don't imagine a movie, an hour and a half movie, going for uh, with this kind of static, this kind of uh, rhythm, and this kind of uh, visual exp- splendor to actually work, <laughs> because it will overload the viewer uh, with so much information that they will end up getting turned off of it. Of it. Uh, I think it's a movie that is very happy about giving giving you everything that it has right away, and then after the first five minutes. It goes down. Like, okay, let's be honest. In the first five minutes, you have an arcade machine that becomes sentient, starts killing people with lasers that activate when he flips the finger at people. (laughs) And then Adolf Hitler calling to a police station to then start shooting bullets through the phone and coming out of the other end. It's It it starts way too crazy. By the time that the laser raptors appear, I'm not even batting an eye. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Just throw whatever you want at me. So... Can I just cut in real quick and just say you win the award for the most awesome paragraph in the year? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's all things. To, I cannot imagine what the writer was smoking or how. The, I would like to see the face of the actors when they were reading the script. They must have gone to the director and gone, "Really, really." Adolf Hitler comes off, takes a phone, and starts shooting bullets through it to go to the other end. What are you? Really. How are you going I, to do that? <laughs> I've seen the video of them being interviewed at San Diego Comic Con, and the actor who was playing out Gun Fuhrer was was like, hmm, "This sounds like something right down my alley." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Sanders Sander said that he was going for professional institution to institution, like looking for funds or assistance, and everyone said, "Yeah, it's crazy." Everyone was turning him down until he started the Kickstarter and started like showing it to the public. Like the trailer or something, what I can't remember right now, what exactly. He had something mm-hmm. to show the audience. Aaron was impressed and they started tossing money at it his way. Yeah. I think Kong Fury as a movie itself, like Kong Fury is daring to try something that's new, that's challenging, that's risky at best. And most companies want to play it safe. For a good example is the new Star Wars. Uh, the Force Awakens. It's playing it safe with what they have. They don't dare to jump beyond what they have, what they can do. So they're playing it safe and future episodes, maybe part eight, will you know, try do something new. Yeah, yeah, but Norman, what you're saying there, that is completely true. They are playing it safe, but by playing it safe, they are not alienating the audience. Mm. Perhaps by being so crazy and so sane, uh, Kung Fury might alienate other potential fans. True. Because, I, I mean, uh, let's be honest, how old are we here? We are like in between our, uh, we are in the 30s range kind of thing, right? We all grew up between the 80s and 90s, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, phys- physically, anyway. Mentality, that's a whole other discussion. Uh, yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's, that's, that is like, we grew up in this kind of culture when we remember VHS tapes, we remember watching, uh, neon, Colored uh, music videos on MTV and the, uh, the, the 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 equivalent of MTV here in Spain. We grew up watching that. For us, Kung Fury is a lampooning of that kind of mentality, and that's perfectly fine. But what about the people that? What about the the kids nowadays that you give them a cassette tape and a and a pen, and you are like, okay, find the connection between these two. They will not be able to tell you because they grew up with a phone in their hands, with an iPhone in their hands. So, to me, this 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 movie will be very silly for for a uh, for a younger audience, and they will laugh. They will be, ah, oh, look at that. That the movie feels like a time traveler went through uh, went through all of the history books and interpreted the. That's oh, this is how the eighties were back then. When Come you on. said time travel, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's one of the things in the movie, actually. It, oh, they don't really travel through times. They, they hack through time. <laughs> oh, God. Right, okay. when, you talk, when you talk about hack writing, you don't mean literally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, but here's the thing. This movie is just for fun. Like what I mentioned before, companies like to play safe because they want to get that return back, that money back in return. Like, look what happened when they tried to play too safe with Gem and the Holograms. 
they didn't make anything. The movie just mm-hmm. showed two weeks in theaters and then like poof. It's like what? The lowest uh rated movie since uh Pixels, probably. I don't know. We don't talk we, we don't talk we don't talk about that movie until another discussion. Yeah, but still you get the you get the general idea. With Kong Fury, here's the thing. It's a Kickstarter project and its original goal was about uh, two thousand, two hundred thousand, was it? Uh, dollars. Yeah, two hundred thousand. Yeah, two hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and it made six hundred thirty thousand dollars back. So, well, people, there's a demand for it. People want to see it, and cool. And it went to film festivals. There's a cult following of it, and it's really cool. The soundtrack is there. The there's also a video game, a side scroller beat 'em up, and it's fun. It's cool. So this movie, in essence, is just. A fun movie just to watch and have fun with. Basically mindless entertainment. If you want something that does not require any thinking or like deep, you know, uh, like Ghost on the Shelf or whatever you call that anime. Mm -hmm. If you want something like the complete opposite where you just like kick back and just watch the fireworks, Gun Fury is definitely the thing. Mm -hmm. The the big difference between Gun Fury and Ghost in the Shell is I know what the hell is going on in (laughs) Gun Fury. (laughs) Computer makes sense. Oh wow! It, yes, God, good. God help me. Yes, oh, Kung yeah. Fury with a killer cyborg and Odin's awesome pecs makes <laughs> way more sense than whatever political brouhaha is <laughs> happening in Japan. Okay, okay. pecs, bro. <laughs> okay, so now we're we're discussing the general uh, topic of the movie. So we discussed this earlier, and we're saying we're going to go by teams, right? Well, the thing is that we can totally th- talk about. How uh, movies nowadays, they could, you don't need to have a big studio. Have, like, this movie was not produced by 20th Century Fox or Universal. It wasn't promoted by any of them. It was, it was done by a full new, full new company called Laser Unicorns. And it was funded through the, uh, thanks to the fans through Kickstarter. And then they, uh, they put it for sale on, they put it up, uh, open to download from, uh, Steam. I think it's also on Netflix, I think, and I also saw it on YouTube. And on YouTube, you can actually watch it for free. You don't need to pay these guys anything, because you can totally watch the movie for free, yet they got profit out of it. So, that that shows you that nowadays, if you want to make the movie, and if you have the means for it, you don't need to depend on a studio to make it. Nowadays, movies are... Well, let's just say that as long as... It has personality. We love it. So, oh, talking this about... is our personality. <laughs> yes. So, talking about personalities, why don't we talk about the characters? Like, for starters. Oh, I thought we, I thought we were we were, into, we were going to talk about how you can get a movie going in uh, without needing a studio. I mean, uh, that's my piece. I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah, yeah. about st- studios and uh, s- movies. Can we take a moment to admire the? Low budget 80s animation sequence in the movie. That's another thing that like put the uh, icing on the cake or whatever the saying is. The cherry on the top is like, oh my! When I saw, it, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, this one, this is definitely a hundred out of ten. This seals yeah. the deal. Suddenly, Confury turns into Brave Star for a couple of minutes. <laughs> it's really cool. Hey. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Go, uh, go, ahead, go ahead, Silver. What were you going to say? Brave Star had a better animation than that. Oh, true, that, but still, <laughs> still. And it's, yeah, it's eighties cheese. It's eighties cheese. Oh, it's, oh, immensely. Well, that's the theme of this. This is no character is portrayed as too smart or cool or uh, as to have this. A big flaw in a lot of uh, attempts at satire is that there's that one untouchable character, the one who is basically just saying you're all stupid or you're all acting weird. No one in this movie takes that role. They're all equally bizarre, caught up in the charm, and that's what makes them enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, Kung Fury himself has these god-awful one-liners. I mean, Schwarzenegger would listen to this and say, oh my god, that is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. But here's the thing, like, for me, uh, the character Kung Fury, um, played by David Sandberg, also the director and producer, right? If I remember right? So, yep. his character is just machismo to the max. Like, in the first scene you see him is him with a girl. And he, here's the thing, with most stories nowadays, the guy always gets the girl. 
not this movie, like in eighties movie, it doesn't really happen. Like I, I'm there for revenge. Like, uh, yeah, the guy already has the girl. Yeah, like you, it, it is true. What you say is that he is pure machismo, but he's not invincible. Oh no, he's not I invincible. Mean, when 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 he's storming Hitler's fortress at the end of the movie, he gets shot the hell out of him, and it's his friends the ones that end up saving the day. Yeah, true that. And here's the thing, also like. Confury, the character himself, con, con, wow, this is gonna be uh, confusing. Confury himself is just an everyday dude, but with special kung fu powers. That's about it. Like, to be honest, there's no such thing as kung fu powers. Kung fu is just a uh, martial arts. I'm sorry, Roman. There are kung fu powers. This movie proves that kung fu powers are real. I yeah, know. Just struck by lightning once. And, 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 cr- and Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was a documentary, damn it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, what, wire work, what's that? What's, oh, they are actually, there's actually people who can fly. <laughs> but still, but still, um, Cold Fury by itself is just one of those cheesy 80s movie where the hero's not overpowered, he's very vulnerable, yet Kung Fury himself just wants to do the right thing. And the right thing is to stop evil and that evil is in the shape of Adolf Hitler, also known as the Kung Führer. He's just doing his job. <laughs> uh, but no, is that, but if we're talking about characters, favorite characters, everybody. I mean, besides Kung Fury, if you if you want to say Kung Fury, perfect. But other than Kung Fury, who are your favorite characters? Oh wow, uh, Silver, where did you go, yeah. first, man? Yeah, go go for it, man. I, I I'm tempted to say Triceratops, but he's. <laughs> short- his choice of targets makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> so, I, I will say Thor. Thor, <laughs> yeah. Thor is very cool. Ro? Although, t- Triceratops, how can you not say that? Not so oh, awesome. yeah. Tri- Triceratops. I love you, Triceratops. I love you, Cone Fury. <laughs> uh, honestly, Triceratops is that out of left field character. Just imagine this. Cone Fury is one of those rogue cops. Um, if you've seen like uh, any any buddy cop movie, like oh uh, you're over the line, um, you need a partner, and usually we get one of those you know logical partners either who's black or white or nerdy or female, whatever it is, and he is a perfect companion piece to the main character. In this one, we just uh, get a triceratop cop, tri triceratop dinosaur head person. I don't know. Is that strange? It's a dinosaur. That is a cop. Is a Triceratops cop? Yeah, it works. Yeah. It's the universe the movie lives in. You see? Yeah, I mean, I just like I said, like no, what, nobody bats an eye. To, uh, but Ro, mm. favorite character? <laughs> well, Triceratops because he looks adorable in the uniform. Thor because his specs <laughs> are awesome, and of course, Barbariana. There is something hot about a chick with a freaking machine gun riding a wolf over the hill. I was like, okay, why the material Mononoke right has, there? Princess Mononoke has no... That's sh- not a word! No, <laughs> miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Oh. I don't use no spear, CCT, and I have a gatling gun. <laughs> oh, what What about you, James? Uh, I'm surprised you guys didn't mention him. My favorite character in the movie, besides Kung Fury, of course, is uh, Hackerman. <laughs> I was going to go for that, man. Hackerman. Hackerman is so much fun. Because he's, he has the better, the most in, interesting and funnest use of the power glove mm-hmm. since the angry video game nerd was battling the forces of evil along with Super Mega Death Christ. Oh. It's just, it's so funny. Mm. And he's so, it's like, I hack you back into life. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's, no, but that's cool because that's one thing that I hate of movies is that the way they treat technology, um, God, especially if you want, I know that we mentioned Gem and the Holograms. That movie doesn't know how the internet works. <laughs> it's like, the, the movies nowadays, they don't know how to treat technology. They think that, oh, technology, we have to make it cinematic, interesting. Oh no, they're a green thing turned into a red thing. That means it's bad. <laughs> He's hacking the MI6. How did he hack that? It's like, Skyfall was, it's, it was a good movie, but it was so bad when it came to the use of technology and all that. Ugh. Ah, drives me nuts. But no, this movie takes it really funny on a very funny, on a very funny route. It's like, we're gonna go ridiculous. We're gonna hack through time. Here, get, get on top of this Commodore 64. <laughs> what? It's, it, yeah, the, the skateboard, that, the skateboard is not a skateboard. It's like the, uh, a keyboard. Yeah. It's the keyboard of a Commodore 64, isn't it? I, I think so. I'm not 100% sure. I have no idea. 
Uh, but still, but still. Um, yeah. For me, yeah, I was about to say uh, Hacker Man, but I kind of remember another character that popped into mind. And, it, and you'll be surprised by the answer. And oh, that... Hitler? Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. How often do how often you say I really like that Hitler guy? Yeah. <laughs> Norman, are we finding something new about you today? No, no. come on. No. Okay, the so character... I... No, okay, here's the thing. The character here, like, he's... Okay, we all seen multiple portrayals of Hitler in... Fiction, you got, um, what do you call this? Wolfenstein, you got other movies like, um, uh, that Brad Pitt one, what was it called again? I, I can, I can hear, I can hear Wait. the people booing in the audience going, boo, down with Norman! Hey, Wait, hey. Do, do you mean Operation Valkyrie with Tom Cruise? No, no, that one, uh, Brad Pitt. The one. No, I think he's, I think he's talking about Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, that one, oh, that, that one. one. Yeah, so you got that one, and there's, there just to be there but in this one Hitler's just he's just so cute with what he's doing he, he wants to conquer the world with Kung Fu cute cute you put Hitler and cute in the same sentence what is wrong with you oh come on oh come on you could do that you could say if Hitler got killed by a cute teddy bear <laughs> yeah okay but World War 2 the... would have been weirder <laughs> Oh my god, no, but he's still. just in this descriptive person. Norman, oh my god. No, I'm not, no, I have no association you, with this guy. God, you, oh, you, you, ahead. you, you, you like to put things in my mouth. Like, I haven't done explaining yet. <laughs> you pursue you. <laughs> that could be taken out of context. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But anyway. It's what we do best in the internet here, uh, Norman. You. Get used to it. Oh, you. Uh, but anyway. It's YouTube town. But anyway, um, this character, like, he's just, like, vindictive and he's just mad I, I just like to see his mad portrayal and if you think about it right they didn't really stop Hitler in the present <laughs> so he's just running around in the present yeah, he's not really dead he's not really dead I mean they have that <laughs> they have that cliffhanger that every single movie in the nine, in the early 90s and late 80s uh, had I mean every single video game adaptation that was made uh, during that time period that uh, they they were full of cliffhangers. I mean, the Super Mario Brothers movie, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, every uh, every movie adapted from video games in that time, cliffhanger, always. Mm -hmm. He man, yeah, he, uh, he man had a cliffhanger as well. Yeah. You see, oh my! After the crisis, you see Skeletor emerge from his supposed grave. Oh my gosh! It's thematic. Yeah. But still, but still, like, I, I do enjoy that character, so. <laughs> and okay, joking aside and everything, you can totally call him a character because he's definitely not the Führer. I mean, come yeah, on. No, like... It's the Kunfuhrer. Yeah, yeah. It's the, he's the Hermannscha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, we, it's, it's okay, Norman. We just like to take the piss out of you. Ah, uh, yeah, you, you, you jerk. <sighs> I especially like to take the piss out of you. It's so easy. So, but anyway, uh, th those are the characters that we kind of, well, I'm not sure if you're going to go yeah, through yeah. them all, but I, I think... No, I, well, if we have to talk about characters that are the blandest, um, like the characters that are not all that memorable for us... I don't know. I kind of enjoyed everyone. Like, okay, if you're talking about non-memorable, the girl in the first scene, yeah. Well, she's oh. just there to show he's macho and yeah. all the chicks want him. Yeah. Yeah, what, yeah <laughs> that's my bicep. What, if, what about the police chief? He's oh, the memorable. Chief, they, they off him very quickly. He could have been fun, but I think no, they no. don't give him enough time to, I, to shine. I, I don't think that having him, uh, what's I'm call this? I don't think that having him on for long is a good decision because he's just one of those, I'm going to stop you because you're not following the rule kind of character. Offing him in a very funny way is interesting. I, I do like that. And making his moment very memorable. It's not that I don't like the character. But they don't give him enough time to shine. We didn't have enough of Triceracop. Oh, yeah. We didn't have enough. Like, he makes up for it at the end. <laughs> with, with all those nut shots. But <laughs> we could have had more of him. It's like, oh, come on. Like, it, it is clear that they had a limited budget to make the effect work and, and, and everything. So maybe that's why they cut his appearance in the film. But it could have been so much better to, to have more, more Triceracop in the movie. They give him a title credit. Come on. Or oh, wouldn't you? I mean, come on. The Triceratops cop. Why would you put him in the title? Yeah. <laughs> the Huffman. Kids Huff love Christ dinosaurs. 
True that. True that. Well, I'm surprised we didn't talk about David Hasselhoff. He's in this movie. <laughs> but, but only as a computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's the ha- he's the 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 half nine thousand. You don't want to hassle a half. <laughs> Here's 9, the thing about Hassel, the David Hasselhoff. I do like him as an actor. He's a pretty funny guy. Like I do remember his scene in the SpongeBob movie, the first one. I like that movie. It's funny because Hasselhoff was a real life person and he interacted with SpongeBob, which is dumb. But yeah, he can act. But here, like, I think that the budget constraint didn't allow him. But yeah, we just got a voice of him for a few seconds. The music video is cool, though. He did the music oh, video. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen it myself, but he did it. Yep. Bro, you it, gotta it, see it. You're missing out, man. True that. <clears throat> He's self-aware. It's and that's. I think that that will be the term to describe the entire movie. Self-aware. Mm-hmm. The movie is full of self-awareness every now and then. At all times, it reminds you that it is. Uh, that it knows that it's a movie. It knows that it's been silly, and it knows that it's having fun with it. Oh, true that. True that. Mm. I didn't think that it was going to be this positive on the film. I thought it was going to be more more critic critical with it. Well, mm. We are like at some points it's funny, and some points it's just like a groan. We should talk about the, we should talk about the things in the movie that we don't think don't work. Honestly. Because I mean, we're being, we're being too glowy, too positive about it. Come on. We, we have to bring the snark here. Well, mm. that's Silver's part. Any snark, oh. Silver? Uh, I can snark with the best of them. But first, they need to offer you this TI-84. <laughs> <laughs> I love it that includes a six-way <laughs> dial. And comes with three ringtones. <laughs> I love oh that scene. How can I completely you... forgot about that part. I love that part. How could you not love this? Like, it's just... I don't know. I love the this movie. Hidden in the, the infomercial <laughs> hidden in the movie. Not well hidden. It's right on your face. But yeah, the freaking uh, product placements. Those are... My subconscious just automatically knocks it off. <laughs> no, I, I love that scene because it's just so dumb. Like, okay. Uh, Kung Fury goes back in... Yeah, Kung Fury goes back in time. Meets with the girl, like the awesome uh, brunette, and meets with the blonde. Rihanna, thank you very much. Yeah. And, and then, Katana. Oh, true. And then has to go back in time, uh, or, well, go back through time. And I don't wonder how he's going to use the phone, though. Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, how give, Kung Fury gives num- phone number to girls, and like, um, what do I do with this? Okay, product placement. It's just so cool. I love that phone. I want to buy it. Oh, see, then it's done its job. <laughs> but here's the thing. The the weird part about this is that any bad parts are part of the so bad it's funny, which mm. is what the movie's aiming for. So in a way, <laughs> even even the parts that don't work serve the movie's theme. Mm-hmm. In fact, perhaps they serve it best of all. True that. I guess the I guess the only thing that's kind of slow, and yet even this is kind of funny, the scene where Kung Fury is battling his way through the Nazi army... Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. It was yeah. beautiful. It was it's straight out of a video game. No, do you guys remember in the nineties or the early two thousands? There's this one flash animation called Zhao Zhao. No, it's uh, no, basically no, no. stick figures fighting. I do remember the stick figures fighting. They oh. are on YouTube. Yeah. Oh yes, now I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I remember those like just stick figures fighting in very flashy moves. Like though, it reminded me of that. See, I was thinking of the Final Fantasy settings where there's these wars and your character's running down this long corridor of everyone fighting and no one's paying attention to him. Oh. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm just looking. It's like, why uh, Why are the Nazis in the background attacking? <laughs> what are they attacking? <laughs> this one guy attacking. Attack the attacker. <laughs> why are you not attacking the attacker who's attacking you with an attack? <laughs> No, uh, it's 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 video game logic. It's it's a Street Fighter kind of level design. It's like uh, you have all these people in the background while they're watching these other two guys beat the hell out of each other. You have a Russian guy pile driving a, a Chinese girl onto the onto the dra- onto the uh, the the street. Why are you not doing anything to help her? It's, oh, you're just watching. Okay, yeah, yeah keep steering that rice pod, Grandpa. You're doing a very good job <laughs> with it. Oh. Is that, so I guess that's go that goes the same to all the Nazis in the uniform in the in the background. And there's also at about 19 minutes and 29 seconds, Kung Fury just strikes a pose and four guys run up and get knocked out. You could tell, I think there's only one act suit actor for all those Nazis. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think there's a minimum of three in one scene. That's, 
that's kind of how they did it. Remember the scene at the beginning in the police station? They only had one police outfit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And clone, that, like, they shot all the other guys on different takes and then they composited it in, into one single scene. They only had one police outfit. That's how limited the budget of this movie was. But I think that works because it's kind of an indie film where you're supposed to just experience the movie for what it is. A dumb action flick. Because it's just dumb and fun. Oh, no, I'm not feeling the movie for its limited budget. Oh, no, I'm no, just, no, just fascinated think. by the fact that with such a limited budget, they managed to make something work. Okay, it's... To me... Okay, I, I don't think I mentioned this before, but when I was in college, I took um videography. So I did a few movies in my days. They were not good, but they were movies. Looking at this and what they do and spotting a few... Hey, I know what they did here. This is pretty interesting. They're smart. They're smart. You know, you're saving budget, that's smart. I appreciate the movie for its technicality too, even though if it's not that awesome. It's a fun movie, that's all I say. Okay, uh, what do we talk about next? <laughs> I'm running out of uh, things to talk about. Anything you guys may want to bring up about Kung Fury? What well, about the 80s animation? Mm, true, we have that too. Yeah, we can talk about that. Well, as a f- we're, we're all here fans of an 80s cartoon, and like James and Silver said, the animation's not quite up to Paris Brave Star. So, what do you think of that few second scene? Did it remind you of any shows way back when? Because for me, it was G.I. Joe. For me, it was personally The Mask. Not The Green Mask. Oh, from the yeah, that's that one. The, the M.A.S.K. It also a Hasbro production. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, yes, Mask. I love that show. <laughs> I love it. Oh. I don't remember Mask. Uh, oh. Basically, it was vehicles turned into other vehicles. Yeah. Oh, I had a friend who cosplayed as Venom, the big oh, bad guy. Miles Mayhem. Yeah, Miles Mayhem. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh! To... I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Uh, I'll link. You, I'll link you to the opening. That yeah. that serves any mem- opening. Mm-hmm. Oh, Last awesome. Crusaders working overtime, fighting crime. <laughs> I love that show. Uh, I'm geeking out. Calm but, your... but it's okay, Norma. It's okay. Calm your tits, Joe. Uh, but but here's the thing, like. Mask as itself, I can't wait for Hasbro to do a show about it. Oh my god, it's oh, super. Oh perfect. no, 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 no. You no, think no. they will? Yes. You just. After what they did to Jim, really? Oh, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> they are going to adapt it into a movie directed by Michael Bay. I don't care. No! I don't care. <laughs> because this... Okay, here's the thing. Mask, as an IP, it deserves Michael Bay's touch. Why? No, no, it doesn't. No, no it doesn't. No, show no. me on the doll where Michael Bay touched this franchise. <laughs> I don't know. But here's the thing. Mask is just one of those action movies where you're driving a truck that transforms into a base or you're driving a motorcycle that can transform into a helicopter and for some reason there's the scantily clad girl leaning over the hood of your car while it's driving flashing her boobs at the audience <laughs> and there's an explosion and the characters are annoying and the characters are racist yeah. and the plot is stupid and michael and bay and michael bay your face is stupid <laughs> <laughs> and the protagonist is Shia LaBeouf. And the characters are only in the I don't movie. Mind. The main characters are in the movie for like 20 minutes. And hey, look at that. Product placement. Oh, hey, look at that. The poster of Bad Boys 2. Hey, look at that. Michael Bay is talking about Armageddon. Hey, look at that. <laughs> and I no. just watched the latest Robot Chicken where it had a Michael Bay skit. And let's just say I'm scarred for life. Oh, God. Uh, but seriously. Really? But... Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it's terrifying and it would make so much sense. <laughs> Uh, I need okay. to watch it now. I like Robot Chicken. All right, all right. We're jumping all over the place, but um, besides no, Mask... No, it's fine. It's fine. We can't be talking about this. I, Michael Bay makes me want to jump off something, all right. <laughs> okay, besides that, like, okay, um, besides Mask, what else? Oh, um, yeah, that animation made by Old Skull Games, a French studio that's basically m- creating mobile games... Really? Was no. contacted by David himself. Yes. Yes. Oh. I, I watched the, I watched, I did my homework, Norman. I watched the Comic Con interview. I watched the, who made that animation. But yeah, created by a French <laughs> studio called Old Skull Games. These guys, amazing beards with a really cool <laughs> chick in the team. Um, got contacted by David and he was like, he wants the animation to like resemble the 80s because the cartoons, aside from movies, was also a big part of the 80s aesthetic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Real Ghostbusters. Oh yes, yes. Oh wow. That was a good show. That was yeah. a really good yeah. show. 
they were drawn the inspiration to make that animation. I mean, the design for Kung Fury, everything by He Man, the Street Fighter. <laughs> I can see that, yeah. Uh, but you know, yeah. we have, we have ignored probably the one elephant in the room. Which is uh oh. Uh, here we are, at least three fans of My Little Pony. Ro, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure where you fall on the spectrum. Uh, 50% at least, maybe. Yeah, maybe I less. Guess. I'm, I'm just there. I'm just there. I like the show. I like the people, but I wouldn't call, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, all right. Three, three bronies and, and a guy who's here. <laughs> I'm an owl. Hi, guy. <laughs> all right. Hi, guy. Hi, guy. And a beard. Thank you very much. What guy with a beard. Very mm -hmm. good. And this movie was produced by Laser Unicorn <laughs> Productions. <laughs> this is this is five degrees of separation. True that. <laughs> it just is. And let's just face it. It's it it is our fate. It is interwoven into our being. Yeah. The horses shall summon us. The, the horses keep uh, coming, showing keep showing up in our lives. Um, before, you know what? It's difficult to think of. Uh, it, it's hard for me to think of life. Before OP entered into it, but in, in 2010, I think it was 2010, uh, there was this video game released by Cartoon Network's Rob, uh, uh, Adult Swim called Robot Unicorn Attack that oh, yes. it, it, it had one of the most memorable soundtracks in any video game ever. And it was so much fun that the guys who, the uh, Rockstar, uh, in their DLC for Red Dead Redemption, uh, Undead Nightmare, they included a unicorn that was exactly like the unicorn from Robot Unicorn Attack, except it wasn't like, it was a horse, you could ride it and everything, it wasn't made out of metal, but when you run with it, it left rainbows behind with butterflies. So, the, the, and that's the, the thing with uh, the unicorn theme, and not only that, but the hot pink color that the logo has around it, that's something very 80s, because oh, yeah. back in the 80s, back in the 80s, hot pink was a color acceptable for both Boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. there were boys who had a hot pink bike, who would wear a hot pink t-shirts, and who would have a, a hot pink chalk to paint on the street. And that was perfectly acceptable. But then the 90s happened, that split divided like boys and girls, boys are blue, girls are pink. <laughs> so it suddenly didn't become acceptable. Yeah, yeah. The fact that the production company is called Laser, uh, Laser Unicorn, Lizard Unicorns is just so sweet. That is probably the 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 first and one of the best send offs that the movie has for the for the eighties. Yep. At least the the way that I that I perceive it. Oh yeah. But what about the scenes, the backgrounds and whatnot? Like did did it scream eighties to you guys? The, yes. The police it did. station definitely. Hacker man's room. What about the power town? glove, man? The power glove. <laughs> the so arcade right. machines. So bad. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, the town, I was too busy watching a, a arcade machine flip me off and shoot laser. <laughs> <laughs> but still. That was, still. that was so funny. Uh, what about the soundtrack? Because, um, Rose says he loves oh, the soundtrack. Yes, yes, retro wave. I freaking love me, love it, man. As a guy who's like, needs a solid beat drop every day, you know, <laughs> you know, there's those two people, there's those two kind of people. One who can't live without a smoke a day, I can live without a solid beat. And retro wave <laughs> is definitely one of the things I listen on a daily basis. Uh, and when I heard the soundtrack, like, yes, so much 80s. <laughs> oh, my beard loves it. <laughs> wow. Another funny thing is, the soundtrack is, the entire soundtrack for Kung Fury is much longer than Kung Fury, the movie itself. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I have it an hour long or something? I, I think so. I have the soundtrack, by the way. Oh my god! Uh, I so need to get that soundtrack now. Uh, but it's it's just like less than 10 bucks, like uh, on, few, uh, on iTunes or someplace. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It, I, is a guy, person who was born and raised, by parent, parent, parents who like, you know, only had like 80s music. Well, they didn't have, well, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, my parents influenced my taste on music. They loved all like the 70s, 80s music that came from them. And back then we had cassettes. They, they kept them around. I had the chance to listen to that. And I, from childhood, I loved that kind of music. Well, then again, didn't have much choice back then, really. <laughs> oh, by the way, soundtrack is about 47 minutes long. Definitely Thank longer than the movie. Yep. <laughs> Well, it's because they give you the full music. Yeah, yeah. All its yeah. 80s -ness. Oh, wow. <laughs> true. When true. I, instead of like clips or parts of it, they give yeah. you the entire uh, song. Yeah. When I first heard the soundtrack, I can hear like, wow, this is so 80s. Like that beat 
Ding, 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 ding. I know, right? <laughs> oh, wow. They, they definitely just... captured the vibe. They did. And that's the most important part. When you're trying to make a music that's no longer made, like 80s, 70s, it's very important to catch that vibe, that beat, that one little deep, the one, uh, what's texture. Detail? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm losing words. I have no idea what I'm looking for, but yes. They definitely captured the essence. And that's what I really love Kung Fury for. What about you two? Well, like I say, I loved everything about Kung Fury. Just the, the cheese, the callback. I haven't had this much fun with a martial arts parody since Kung Pao into the fist. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, There's another movie. movie. I, I love that one. <laughs> that's a lot of nuts. <laughs> you will not believe it. I kid you not. I've been watching that freaking scene. For the past two weeks, every day. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, because least, that's how funny I found it. At least you're not stuck on the wee wee wee. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and that too, but not as much as... <laughs> Blood, the sides are all nuts! <laughs> That'll be four bucks, baby! You want price with that? Uh, <laughs> he just left! With nuts! <laughs> uh, I just love the line. We we purposely train him uh wrongly, just as a joke. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah. <clears throat> Nothing but lowbrow humor in this show. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> We're very high class. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Point uh, proven. <laughs> okay. What about you, James? Uh well what do you want me to say about the soundtrack or the movie in general? Uh well I think soundtrack and movie in general. No, I the, the soundtrack was Good. I mean, I like the fact that it feels like a mix between a John Carpenter and a Power Rangers episode. <laughs> uh, when it comes to that, it's very, very poppy, very, very 80s in the, in the way that it, that it plays. And to be honest, if they release the soundtrack, I hope they release it on vinyl record and cassette tape. They can do it. They did it with Guardians of the Galaxy. They can do it with Con Fury. They did it with My Little Pony. So, yeah. Everyone, uh, everyone's going the vinyl route again. Now suddenly mm-hmm. it's, it's hipster to be in the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it, it's cool though. Uh, to talk very briefly about vinyl records and all that, it is true they are making a resurgence and they are actually selling vinyl players, like record players for under 150 euros over here and they have not only they have the speakers, they have USB ports, they are digital, so you can, you can plug them anywhere. They have, uh, Ethernet ports and everything you can connect into the internet and download uh, wow. because they come with, uh, with hard drive and all that. So it's really cool. It's not just a vinyl player. It's basically an entire, um, they even have a CD player and everything. They are basically an entire system on their own. Okay. Only they have a record player on top. Right, so right. yeah, they, it is true that they are making a resurgence. Um, I really like the soundtrack. I I find it memorable. Every now and then I find myself humming the um action na, 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 like a true, true survivor. survivor. No. True survivor. It's it, it when a movie leaves <laughs> an impact on you after just watching it a couple of times and you can either quote almost all of it or hum the theme or something, it means it's doing something right. Mm-hmm. So And this one is the doing something right. So by the way, uh this movie Spawned a video game called Kung Fury Street Rage. Right, I'm assuming it's a side scroller beat 'em up, like classic. Yes, it's, it's not exactly. It's it's uh, you you one finger dead punch. Really, I came because uh, yes, I got the mobile game and I've seen the PC game. It's basically one finger dead punch. Only I'd say better, because, but no uh, more challenging is the word. More challenging. From what I'm seeing on the wiki here, it says that uh. Its inspiration is from Street of Rage, Double Dragon, and Final Fight. So, yeah, it's one of those side scrolls of beat em up. And, bro, you said you have it, right? Yes, I have it. I played it. I love it. It's inspired. It's made in the style of those old 90s console games. But it's really, it's like, it's, it's the, it has the mechanics of one finger dead punch. You tap left to punch the guy on the left. You tap right to punch the guy on the right. And there's, like, different opponents who has, like, different combat patterns. That's pretty mm. much it. Well, that's fine. The thing is, is that this game's a bit more challenging. <laughs> After, like, the first, like, 15 hits, you start to get a lot more, like, difficult. It's like, what is happening? 
Right. Well, that's good. I was that's the beauty of it. I was about to say, it's, it sounds like God of War. We're, we have all these combos, but all you need is square, square, triangle. Yeah, but the thing is, no one tells you what combos what opponent has. And there's like several of them, and you got to figure out for themselves. Hmm. All right, then. So, what else can we say? Because I think we officially geeked out of Kung Fu. Like, <laughs> We, uh, we didn't, we didn't talk about the, the, we didn't talk about what we think is the weakest aspect of the movie. Uh, because I, I do have one or two things that I could be con, that I could, I'd say they are a, a bit concerned about. Okay, man. Um, uh, okay. Well, do you guys have any, any, any concerns about the movie <laughs> or any criticisms that you'll say, uh, oh, maybe they didn't do this all I want part story. two now. That's all I have to say. Yeah, my, my, my greatest Chris that the movie ends. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, what about you? Oh. I'm now trying to think. Let's see. Explosions, kung fu, hot chicks with machine guns riding wolves, dinosaurs, fight, explosions. <laughs> I can't see. I can't. There's nothing for me to, like, say I did. There is absolutely, I can't, I don't, I didn't see any. I've watched the movie like over five times already, and I haven't noticed something that would make me wonder, this could have been done better, or even like the thought that, eh, that could have used improvements. I just never had that. It's like, I enjoyed it for every single part, every single minute for what it was. Um, in the okay, case, maybe gonna... except for that, okay, maybe there's just one okay. thing with the, the scene with the puppy. I was like, no, don't shoot oh. the puppy. <laughs> Your attention was like, oh, no, but not thankfully the puppy. they don't kill it. Thankfully, yeah, they I mean, don't that, kill yeah, it. Thank God it didn't. Otherwise, I, I would definitely not give it a hundred out of ten. But just the <laughs> tense, like, no, not the puppy. <laughs> it always gets me. Like, these human beings, oh no, screw these human beings, but not the puppy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What about you, man? James. No, okay. Um, well, I did say at the beginning of the re- of the discussion, and I'm gonna bring it up again. I think the movie should sit slow way too soon, and I'm gonna put it like that. Yes. Uh, Lowbrow, yeah, I walk on my nose. <laughs> I'm so lowbrow right now. Uh, I think it starts way too hard, way too soon, and by the time, like I said, by the time that we reach the the Hitler's fortress and we have, uh, we have the Triceratops, the two barbarian chicks, and Thor, and Hackerman all fighting against these Nazis. At that point, I am kind of like desensitized. <laughs> so there is, the, the, to me, the, the sense of wonder and surprise is kind of like. It's good in the first viewing, but after the second viewing, it's it already works out. It 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 doesn't overstay its welcome. It's still really cool to watch because it's very well shot and it's very well made. But I'm like, oh my god, over over overload, overload. Stop it, stop it. Give me a break. So and like I said, it sits well at 30 minutes long. If they try to make it any longer, I don't think it will it will be able to work well. Uh, but again, my opinion. It is clear that this movie is, uh, like I said, I enjoyed it. I don't regret watching it. And I am very glad that they, that they made so much profit out of it. And that they have a fan base for it. But yeah, I think that's, that's probably the, my biggest issue is that it starts way too hard, way too soon. Alright. For me personally, I think they didn't use the Hoff too well. Like, that scene at the back as a cameo is good, but, like, I want more out of him. Eh, Did me. you not see that was a reference to Knight Rider? <laughs> yeah, but like I wanted more because the the end where Chasohov plays Kit was fun and all, but I, I wanted more out of it because you called David what Hasselhoff. What did you want it? I don't know. There's, there's a thing because you hired David Hasselhoff for scene. Like you even made a music video out of it. Like couldn't you have him talk more? Yeah, longer. Dude, he made an entire song. His face was there. You heard his voice. You had a Knight Rider reference. Dude, what more did you want? My mind already exploded. You know, I'm here with Ron, this one. I don't get what you want, Norman. I want him to be in the movie You sound like a freaking Pokemon fan right now, man. You want a lot of the stuff, but you don't know what you want. I just want him to be in the movie more. Like, more content from him. At least five minutes long. Oof. I didn't do the man, then. I just, I'm just seeing what I want. That's all. Nobody can. <laughs> just say you don't okay. know what you want. <laughs> I don't know what they could do with him, but I just want his, I just want Hasselhoff longer on screen time. That's about it. If you want Hasselhoff, if you want David Hasselhoff, 
on screen more time. Watch Knight Rider again, man. Trust me. Yeah, I do. Uh, okay, okay. Or okay. Piranha 2. <laughs> wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a minute. He's in Piranha 2? Yep. As a oh, lifeguard. Yes. As a lifeguard, David Hasselhoff, as <laughs> David Hasselhoff. Hey, watch reference. Pro- proponent of natural selection. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Oh, my God. I need to watch that now. Oh, uh, so you, you, you all doubt me in yet. <laughs> there it is. All right, all right. So, um, Silver, do you have any any criticisms for the movie? Uh, because come on, everybody here, we can criticize all we want, but you're the only one that's legit because you have. Oh, I, you the are only... the only one with an internet show. So. Oh yes, that makes my opinion so much more valid than the next guy's. But more more valid than mine for sure. <laughs> Nobody cares about what I think. Oh, uh, oh, oh, I care. I care. Oh, thank you, thank you. Somebody cares. <laughs> Hug me. And plus, Silver, you know how to deliver it more intelligently. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, if one looks at the cinematography, one may find that it likes a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> no, actually, I do like the cinematography in this. Uh, I will say there are moments where it feels like we're being, we're, they're pushing the 80s a little too hard. Like the, the scene where he's in the cartoon world is great, but to get there, he drives a, Lamborghini over a, a keyboard through a space time warp, and it's like, what? Wow, I took something really awesome before I saw this. I just wish I knew what. But yeah, you know, this is a movie that it asks. It says to this audience, "Look, I'm not asking you to go into deep thought or anything. I'm asking you just to laugh at the absurdity. Can you do that?" And as an audience member, I say, "By God, yes, I can." <laughs> yes. So I, I guess if the greatest criticism is that it's a movie that doesn't invite you to really look back on the 80s and think of what worked. You just look on the 80s and say, oh, it wasn't that silly. Mm -hmm. But that isn't really a bad thing in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Although I'll tell you this much, I still take 80s over our current generation in many regards. Oh, Oh, my gosh. You know, I I, I will take the 80s over the 90s and the 2000s any time. My gosh, that was a dark time. So you're saying that this movie requires a lot of compromise from both the movie and the audience watching it, right? It requires you to turn off certain faculties to enjoy it. And it's not, it's not trying to say, you know, there, how can I describe this? Okay. I watched, uh, a movie called Halo Nightfall. Oh, it was, it was off. about the was off. Halo Master Chief guy. Well, it's set in the same universe, but does not star that guy. Okay. Nightfall was awful. It was trying to be this super serious uh, study on the mentality of soldiers. Mm-hmm. And what it was was a low-budget, awful movie. You know, it was asking your audience, take me seriously. And I'm saying, with those with those effects, with those, with that acting, with that writing, no, I can't. I'd have to make myself dumb to enjoy this. <laughs> Gun Fury is saying, I'm asking you to accept that I'm silly. And I, I was like, you know what? I don't have to be dumb to enjoy this. I just have to accept it's not asking me to try and take it seriously. There oh you my go. Gosh. No, is that I I saw that movie and the cover looks so interesting and everything. So, but no, but it's crap. Then it's crap. Oh, it's an awful, it's an awful movie. Oh, oh boy. Okay, thank you for the heads up. I'm gonna do my best to avoid it. Not even <laughs> bother with it. My and God. I, and I say this as a Halo fan, boy. So people who think, oh, it doesn't like it because they like Halo. I love Halo. But. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I'm taking this away. Uh, but yeah, basically it requires you to just accept the silliness. And as with some of my friends, you just can't do that. Mm. Of course, some of my friends could be real fuddy duddies. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that mo- covers most of what we need to say, right? You did say that the things that you didn't like, right, Norman? Yeah, Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff not appearing in Albany. Yeah. Mm. All right. So yeah, well, you know, I think that's 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 pretty much it. Uh, we don't because if we keep going on, it, we, we we might be going on on circles. If you yeah. think about it, we have been talking about this movie for like what an hour or something like that, yep. and it's only thirty minutes long. <laughs> uh, I was expecting something like this was gonna happen. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, not, here's I'm not the thing. Like, I noticed a trend here. Like, we go long when we hate something. We go long when we love something. And this is one of those times where we go long because we love something. We go yeah. short if it's uh, mad. Go- do, do you really want to phrase it like that? <laughs> I do. <laughs> really? Norman, I, I, I am stunned at you, sir. Normally I'm the one who pushes <laughs> these kind of jokes. Anyway. 
No, no, I, Norman. Norman. Just keep going long. Keep going yeah, long. Keep going. Hard. Keep going long about how much you love Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Okay. No, okay. Talk about your love for the half. <laughs> okay. What about final thoughts, guys? <laughs> oh. I, I think those kind of, those could count as final <laughs> thoughts, really. Uh, hmm. My only final thought is Kung Fury and Kung Pao back to back viewings. My New Year's. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, I, yeah, double double feature, Kung Fury and Kung Pao. My oh, friends yeah. will hate me for it. <laughs> oh, I need to get Kung Pao now. Oh, my friends. That's but, why Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, but honestly, if you haven't watched it and you're gonna watch this for the first time, I suggest going onto YouTube and watching it on 480p or lower. Then you'll get that draining effect that the show is trying to well. Push out. They do have it in 1080p, which is kind of really high def. But nah, go go low. The lower, the better. So Norman, you want to keep going low <laughs> about how much you love this? Low movie, quality, right? you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious! Uh, Norman, you're the, you are on your own. You're the gift that keeps on giving. Oh my gosh! Uh, so next week, what are you going to do? Well, find it fine to con- uh, hard to concentrate with all that love on you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, uh, we are going to have something very special because this is something that we haven't done uh, before. And I'm surprised we, we, because we don't just talk about ponies, as you guys might have already found out. We talk about many other things. And so next week, and out of my suggestion, these guys are catering to my taste. This, for one, is is so fun. Uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be doing a movie year review. We're going to be talking about the movies that we like the most, the movies that we hated the most, the movies that we found the most disappointing, and the ones that we found more surprising. We're just going to be talking about movies. Yeah, that's my territory. That's what I'm all about. But we're going to have fun. We're going to be doing that. But that will be for next week. Uh Well, I think that's the end for this episode, right, guys? Oh, by the way, this episode is coming out on New Year's Eve. So, Happy New Year. Happy New Happy. Year to you all. Happy New Yay. Year. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for listening to us. And we will see you next time on the MBS Show Discuss. This has been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. I am the spirit of David Hasselhoff. Worship me. I am Relicious Rhymes with Delicious. <laughs> and we will see you in the next MBS Show episode. Have a good one, everybody. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See ya. Adios. Now it's really on. <laughs> Can't do without it.